at Hope and Arts Academy, the high school vocal majors, also known as Vocal Tavo. Um, we'll open today with um, Open Your Eyes. It's a song by Chick Corea, arranged by Jason. And our soloists are Becky Wilson and Gabby Ariaga.
because they don't want to do that. Um, so Greek Jaspers is uh, same with Vertical Voices. Um, they're coming to town next year, and if you haven't heard them, they are an amazing vocal group, um, vocal ensemble. The, so his inspiration, I'd like to read you his inspiration for this song. Um, I wrote I Am Alive soon after the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida in 2016. Prior to this shooting, five cyclists lost their lives in Kalamazoo, Michigan, when they were hit from behind by a driver under the influence of various substances. Both of these instances highlight communities who are vulnerable, communities who soldier on knowing tomorrow is not guaranteed. I am a musician, but I'm also a cyclist and a member of the gay community. These were my people. Trying to process what had happened, I cycled up to the site of the crash at Kalamazoo. Um, it had been a few weeks. The grass was still flattened. The telephone pole and fence posts were dented. It was winter. Lives had been lost here. It was chilling. I got back on my bike and continued my ride. As I cycled through the forest and along the river, I was filled with the joyful privilege of being alive. What followed immediately was an intense sense of responsibility. I had been afforded another day on this planet. My voice was not lost in the crash or the shooting. So many communities continue to encounter violence in their life, vulnerability, minorities, the poor, students at school, parishioners at worship, the undocumented, the LGBTQ community, I am alive, excuse me, I am alive is a call to arms. It's a song of solidarity. We sing together to embrace the gift of each new day. We sing together to represent the community where every voice matters. We sing because we are alive.
group. You know what, the first thing I feel like I have to say is that it is so obvious that they are committed to what they're doing, isn't it? They, I feel like you guys gave it 100%. You were, you were totally committed to this program. So thank you for that, because that touches my heart. That's awesome. Um, what's your favorite song? My Life. Okay, I Am Alive in My Life. Open your, okay, so we have everything. Everybody's got a different favorite. Isn't that typical though, you know? Some songs just speak to us more than others. And maybe because of our experiences, you know, different lyrics speak to us differently. Um, what do you think your strengths are? Yes. You think you have amazing blend? Would you agree? I would agree. Awesome. It, others? Any other? Any other special strengths or gifts? You, you read her body language, and there's like this magical thing that happens from her eyes to yours, and, and you know what she needs without her having to say it, right? Like the stink eye, even, you know? You know exactly what that means. No, I'm joking, but, but isn't, isn't that a wonderful, just amazing way to communicate with somebody when music is happening, and she's not able to, to make a sound? But just by being the artist and using her hands and her face, you know what she wants. Because you are musicians, and, and you know what you want it to sound like, too. Awesome. What else? You love the music. Yeah, because you, you decided to commit to it. Do you think that's just a choice? Or do you think that, like, I mean, have you ever been given a song and at first gone, eh, if I really am going to buy into this one or not. You know, I like Miss Faulkner, but I'm not, I, I don't know that I have the vision that she has. You know, and then you get it learned. And what happens? You go, man, that was a whole lot of work. But now I get it. Now it's super fun to sing. Yeah, I've been there too. Sometimes that wisdom that somebody has we need to give it a chance. So thank you for giving her that chance. Um, okay, and, and if you were in her shoes, what would you say in this particular program you would like to see happen? <laughs> hey, what? Okay, more connection with the crowd. You want to get them riled up? Get them, get them really moved. I mean, isn't it every performer's dream to, to somehow make a connection with the audience? You want them to feel something. It might be joy, it might be sadness, it might be just a reflection, but you want them to feel something. Awesome, what else? Okay, really look alive, like the song says. Okay, you have to look alive. Do you think, do you, think you could do more of that? Okay, awesome. Isn't it weird, why, why didn't we? Why don't we? I mean, you know, we intellectually tell ourselves, okay, I'm gonna look really into this, and then we don't. What's up with that? Why don't we? It's, it's a choice, right? We have to decide, again, to be into it. And I loved, by the way, in that opening tune, you're out here and they're all singing behind, but you're like moving and grooving, and she is into it, yeah. Yeah, exactly, because, you know, you can't just check out. You have, to, you have to be into it the whole time. Anything else that you'd like to work on more of? Executing rhythm, those, that's tough, isn't it? Being really precise with a lot of those rhythms, and you guys had some challenging things. Um, okay. Let me think about the things that I thought we could work on, and I, I don't want to, I don't, uh, no, I'm all right. Oh. 
the V on a lie. Okay, while we're talking about that particular letter, in the opening song, um, I was just trying to imagine how you could make the opening parts more percussive. And then, when you get to the parts that really aren't vocal, it should be a whole nother texture, right? A big contrast. If you have a palette of approaches that you take to say the words, you want to draw the one, you want to take the one that really is going to make it percussive on all of those consonants, so that it doesn't sound like you're trying to sing like a percussion artist, but you're actually really being percussive with it. And then when you open up those coral things, it just goes, oh yeah, that should just feel so good right there. Now you're singers. Because I really hear two different, two different things that should be happening there. And you should always know which one it's supposed to be, right? Okay, am I supposed to be percussive here or am I gonna, am I gonna be really singing? So that's what I would love to hear. And the V on the live, oh my gosh, that's such an important letter in that word, isn't it? Super important, and it has to be all together. So when you're talking about precision and endings, Kirk was talking about the end of the phrase, that's, that's where you're taking it home. It, it all has to be there. So those are all things you can work on. And then in the ballad, um, I think, so much of it was locked in, but I, I want to reflect, I want you to go back and reflect on the words that are the most important in the lyrics. Just like, well, of course you guys weren't in here when Kirk was doing that last clinic, but you know, he said like the word the, T-H-E is, within a phrase, the is not gonna be that much important, but so many other words, the ones that come before and after that are more important. So you have to say it and sing it the same way. For example, when Ms. Faulkner was reading to us the description of this song, I was really paying close attention to her inflection because she had emotion that she wanted to be recognized in what she was saying. But we have to do the same thing when we turn around then and sing the song, okay? Some words are gonna be more important. And sometimes when we're trained classically and we're trying to sing the best that we can, and clearly you guys have lots of wonderful training, you know, we wanna keep the support and everything continuing nice and smooth, but, but we can't lose the musicality and the emphasis. So, I don't want to tell you which words are most important. I think you're perfectly capable of knowing which ones are going to be important to you. You choose the meaning that you want to be emphasized. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, so with all of that, Linda, do you want to work on the alive thing or do you want to, or Kirk? The word alive without the V is what? Alive. Yeah. And, and, and I'm positive, without knowing you, I'm positive that every one of you put a V on that word every time. But that is one of those sounds that if you don't put pitch on your V, we'll hear it. And the lasting power of it, it evaporates, okay? It would be different if you all had these weapons, right? These microphone weapons. And I'm totally, totally fine with you singing without microphones, because you break it. You break it. But just make sure that when you sing the word alive, that you hear the V. Because if you don't hear the V because you've gone on to the next thing, we won't hear the V either. Auditoriums, look up there. Look up, look, look, there's where your consonants are. Now look out where your audience is. Uh, the ones who can appreciate you are out here. There's nothing up there that can appreciate the V that you put up there. Okay, does that make sense? Find a spot in the middle of that. Just, just 
do what you think is the necessary amount of v sound on I am alive to make its way out here. She was right, and she's still right. Okay. Look at the entirety of the piece from a dynamic standpoint. Where do we want to make this audience? You, you did bring it down, but it was, man, it was two thirds of the way through the tune before you gave us any sense of relief from in your face. Okay. Dynamics within a phrase. You've got that. Dynamics from one section of the tune to the next section. You have to sense some of that. Dynamics over the long haul, not so much. I think you can, you know, again, step back from your own art and look at it from a dynamic standpoint. I mean, if somebody made a cell phone recording of what you just performed, don't listen to it. Not like the people who created it, but just like someone who's listening to it. Maybe YouTube. Okay. And see if ooh, maybe there were some opportunities to do some sculpting dynamically. Other than that, delightful. Delightful, delightful. That's okay. I had the pleasure of working with this group a little earlier this year, and I just want to tell you I saw a lot more involvement in you know, that was one thing we worked on in the classroom. And a personal involvement, a personal buy-in was a lot more apparent today, so I'm really happy to see that. On the ballad, I still felt like it was a little stiff. I feel feel like you you were controlled by tempo, and, and part of it is because Steve Ziegley wrote this in a do 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 you know, that kind of a feel. So it feels like that has to be tempo-wise, but it's on the duet, it's also tough to do a duet without it being controlled by, by tempo. So you have to find a way to, to either stretch it out and make it more tender or make, make it, you know, a little freer. And I, I noticed that you slowed it down a little bit and, and, and really tried to stretch that out. So congratulations on that. This is a really fine group and you're so musical. And without the microphones, I thought that, that your whole performance I don't 
think it suffered at all, except for the V on the life. We didn't hear that live. And I think on that, just going back to that for a second, you guys that had the ah, I am alive, just do the V on the up beat, V on the alive, where the rest of the folks are coming back into it. And I think adjusting that little section would really help that. But um, congratulations on a really, really nice performance. I don't think you suffered at all about using microphones. It was smart to use the microphones on the solos. That brought it out. And, and the balance was very, very fine. Uh, Shirley, you're on this one, so you want to say any closing remarks? Just great job. Great job. You guys are wonderful musicians, but you're not done. You know? Keep up the musicianship part of things. And, and just step back, try to take a look at, at all of your tunes and think, how can we make them more musical and more impactful from a consumer standpoint, okay? That's how I would sum it up. Great job, thank you so much.